Hello, folks. Uh, welcome back to World War Two TV. I was in the mood for streaming, so I'm doing another show, and this time it's book reviews. So we have the 80th anniversary of Operation Overlord coming up next year, and yes, there'll be lots of programming about that, and of course, other 80th anniversary uh, events as well, because D-Day wasn't the only thing that was happening. There's still lots going on in Italy, lots happening in the uh, Far, e uh, Far East, lots happening in uh, the Eastern Front, etc., etc. But I thought I would share with you so I have my um, D-Day uh, book review. So obviously I've got a huge library of Battle of Normandy D-Day titles. And this show particularly is about the overview volume. So the ones that try and tackle all the beaches, the preparations, um, the, the planning in, in one volume. It's not going to be talking about books about particular sectors. So books on Omaha Beach or British Airborne that I will do in the future. Um Obviously, I'm a tough crowd when it comes to Battle of Normandy and D-Day. There's lots of things that I would maybe notice because I live here, geographical details, things that that, that would niggle at me. So I, I have yet to find a D-Day or Battle of Normandy book that hits every single one of my, um, you know, 10 out of 10 scores. It, it, there's always going to be the odd thing that niggles me. Um, and that's how it is with books but here is a selection of books so i'll be talking about what they particularly cover some will be more suited to you the individual some will be less suited it's just an, an idea of, of different levels of, of depth etc etc we'll start um with what happened before operation overlord so you know we've talked about it a lot on this channel some operations in world war ii were planned on the back of a cigarette packet in a pub in 10 minutes. Others saw months and months of planning. Overlord is in the second category of months and months of planning. And so my first book, and David has been a channel uh, a channel guest, David Abrutat, uh, Vanguard, The True Stories of the Reconnaissance and Intelligence Missions Behind D-Day. So this is reminding us of the things like the cop parties, the midget submarines, the aerial intelligence, the, the, the photos taken, the reports in the French resistance, the, the various British and international government departments are involved in the planning of D-Day. And it's a it's a it's a kind of lavishly illustrated book. It's very nice glossy paper, um, lots of diagrams and charts and 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 maps and things like that. And it's an aspect of the landing that I think is overlooked. Often books will just immediately start in the landing craft approaching the beaches on june the 6th and kind of forget that there were this 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 mammoth operation behind it um i will also i should point out be covering deception and spying book reviews with regards overlord in some other future review show we're just thinking about the actual operation itself um so first one vanguard uh there's the, the cover there um worth getting just a, a good introduction uh, and also for people who know a bit about the subject that encompasses all that kind of planning aspect and reconnaissance of d -Day. That's the first one. Number one. Um, probably the go-to book now on D-Day in terms of if it's not in there, it's not a story worth telling, is Sand and Steel uh, by, by my friend and channel regular Peter Caddick Adams now. It's not going to be for everybody simply because of the fact it's enormous. Um, and I didn't read it in kind of one go because lots of information. I kind of broke it down. I read a few few chapters over a few weeks and I kind of put it aside a bit. And it took me maybe six months to get through it. Um, as I said, it's not going to be for everyone. Um, and probably, and I love Peter, he's a great guy. This will be my first go-to reference book for D-Day. In the, If there's a unit I want to look up or there's a detail about the planning or the landings that I, you know, the first book I will go to will be Peter's because it's just comprehensive. It's full. It's packed. About half the book is planning for D-Day and then the, the second half is how it unfolds. And it pretty much closes at the end of June the 6th. It doesn't take us on to the Battle of Normandy. So um, it, it, it isn't about the Brits. It's one of those books, Leslie, that has different covers depending on which country you're in. So this is the British version, so it's got British troops on the cover. I believe the American version has American troops on the cover. The same thing happens with James Holland's book, where they get a, uh, a cover suited to the, the country with which the book is being released. It covers all five beaches. It covers airborne. It covers Navy. It covers Air Force. But, you know, it's it's a it's a dense, thick book. Um, it, it's it's not a tough read. 
um, in the sense that I, 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 it is readable, but it's just a lot of information. For some of you watching, it'll it'll be too much. And others, it'll be not enough. Um, that's why we're including it here in this review. It, it's solid, solid history. Um, so there we are. It's it's a it's in the top suggestions of mine if you want detail. Um, if you want it in there, it covers everything. It debunks some of the myths. And as it says there, it was an, a new study, you know, a timely and uh, a book there. And Peter had been to the archives. You know, he, he debunks a few myths, for example, about um, he talks about the the uh, oft repeated idea that the Americans refused funny tanks, the fannies designed by Hobart's division for Omaha Beach, and he explains that wasn't the case. There was no refusal. There was no snubbing. It was a double of logistics and supplies and training, and, and, and that kind of thing is in there. So as Niels says there, it's not an entry-level book. That's a um, perfect way of describing it, Niels, um, um, but but solid. So that's my second book. Um, one of the uh, misunderstood aspects, I think, of Operation Overlord um, is the air element, the bombardments, um, and... A book I enjoy, well, it's two books by the same author, and he has also been a, uh, a guest on the channel. And, of course, just because they've been a guest on my channel, I, I am endorsing their books. Yes, they are colleagues and friends of mine. And, and yes, there is some bias in this review show. I'm, I, I'm talking about people who are friends of mine. But Stephen Bourquet, American professor, he wrote Beyond the Beach about the, uh, the transport plan. I'll hold up the cover in a minute. The transport plan, a, a, a longer book. But this is one of the Osprey um air power type, uh, series and so it's you know it's it's thin um and it's about it doesn't come up very well with the camera there the deadly failure of allied heavy bombing on june the 6th so it's quite provocative um it talks at length about um the use of allied bombers um but what i particularly liked about it is is the illustrations um because they really graphically show if you want to for example this this shows you uh, the flight paths of the bombers, which bombers came into which part. That's Gold and Juno there. Uh, which wing, what their targets were. You get a similar one for um, the American beaches, of course. Um, it explains like there's a good diagram explaining the, the reason they come in at the angles they do. The, the, the altitude bombs are dropped out. It talks about the, the roles of Pete Casada and Doolittle and all the other guys in those decisions made before DD about how they were going to bombard certain areas, why they were going to bombard certain areas, which altitudes were chosen, which flight paths were chosen. And it's really readable. You can do it in the evening. And it's going to be my kind of first port of call now for um, D-Day bombing uh information as i move forward so um there we are uh really good book there d-day 1944 the deadly failure of allied heavy bombing on june the 6th by stephen borkay um next one we'll go from the air to the sea now craig simons who's also been on the channel mostly known for writing about U.S. Navy command list. He's written about Nimitz. He's written about Midway. He's written about Coral Sea. But he has turned his hand to Normandy. He travels to Normandy once or twice a year on World War II museum tours. So he's he's perfectly capable of, of talking about Operation Overlord, or in this case, Neptune. Because Craig Simon's book, Neptune, The Allied Invasion of Europe and the D-Day Landings, um, focuses on the role of the Navy. So the LSTs, the LCTs, the uh, the the transport vessels um it's a very good book however the reservations i have about it he is weaker on the british and canadian beaches than he is on the american beaches that doesn't mean he's awful it's just that he's he's an american historian who teaches and works in the u.s and i think it, it, it his understanding of the sword beach for example is less good than his understanding of Omaha and Utah. Doesn't mean it's worthless. It's come far from it. It's in, I definitely recommend it. And it's definitely a, a very good book to cover the naval aspect of it. But if you're someone like Ian Carr or Gulliam watching this, who perhaps has a greater than average understanding of the role of the British Royal Navy and the British um, aspect of, of, of Overlord stroke Neptune, you might find this book a little bit not to your taste because it's, it's, probably aimed at the American market. I mean, it's the American LSTs on Omaha Beach. But a solid book, 
he's got the credentials. You know, he's been teaching naval history for 30 years or 40 years or something, you know, teaches at Annapolis, you know, he's highly regarded. You can't go wrong with it. I would just say that that it's probably um favoring the American side of things, but a solid good book. So Craig Simons, Neptune, the Allied Invasion of Europe, and the D-Day landings. So it, it does talk about the land, but it's mostly focused on the Navy. Okay. Next one. This next book is like a kind of a mini series in print. And in fact, there was a, a BBC stroke international product production of this about 20 years ago. And it's 10 days to D-Day by David Stafford, who I believe is Canadian. And there was a TV show version of this years ago. Now, what it does is it covers, as you can explain, imagine there, the 10 days leading up to D-Day. So it talks about the sausage camps, as they call them in the UK. It talks about the German preparations uh, for the, a landing they know is coming at some point. And what it does is it's he selects uh, a selection of characters to follow the story through their eyes. So one of the guys it covers is Bill Tucker, who is in the 5th fifth. Fifth Parish Infantry Regiment. I got to know Bill Tucker a little bit. Andre Heinz was a French resistance uh, fighter operative in Caen. Rommel is one of the characters. Glenn Dickin. Glenn Dickin was with the Regina Rifles. He fought in Corsel on D-Day and was, spoiler alert, he was killed in the village of fontaine Henri uh, late on June the 6th. Some people like Colin watching this know Glenn Dickin's story. He's pitched on the back of the cover there. That's Glenn Dickin uh, there. Um, there's Andre Heinz, the resistance worker. There's also covers a, 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 a Wren. It covers, um, there's Bill Tucker there of 82nd Airborne. It covers um, uh, Otway, Colonel Otway of the Royal Oster Rifles, uh, who then became the commander of 9th Parachute Battalion. So it's like, I say, it's like a mini series. It's, it's like kind of, imagine that old Winds of War series, but with real people. So you're covering a selection of people. So it's a, it's, it covers the whole of Operation Overlord, but through the viewpoints of these real people who are part of it. So Bill Tucker boarding the aircraft, Bill Tucker jun jumping out into Normandy, the 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 Andre Heinz in Caen when it was bombed by the Allies on D-Day, etc., etc., etc. So it's it almost reads like historical fiction, except it's real. Um, it's probably about 25 years old, this book now. Um, I've never been in contact with David Stafford. I don't know much about him as an author. I don't know whether he did other military titles. I, I, I could have done that research before doing this show, but I didn't. But it's a really, it's a, it's an entertaining read. It's the kind of book that you can read and understand and learn about D-Day, but also kind of have an enjoyable read as well. It's, it's a character driven, um, book, um, if you remember seeing Andre Heinz and in an Otway in a TV documentary, that would be the documentary that accompanied this series because it was like a what do I call it a docu docudrama. So you had uh, actors recreating Otway attacking Merville Battery intercut with Colonel Otway talking about his recollection. So Bill Tucker was portrayed by a guy on screen, and then it would cut a bit like kind of the beginning of Band of Brothers. So um, um, th that's that's ten days. I don't know whether the TV series is available to stream anywhere. I, I think I've got an old clunky converted from VHS version of it or DVD somewhere. But 10 Days of D-Day by David Stafford is my next book to recommend. The next one is the oldest um, book, uh, the one written closest to the war. In fact, it was commenced during the war. And it is The Struggle for Europe by Chester Wilmot. So Chester Wilmot, you probably know, was a, was a journalist. Um, uh, he covered... Um, the war from various theatres. He was Australian. Um, he was in his 30s in World War II. He died in 1954. So this book, I say, was written just after. It's a get. It's a mass. It, it doesn't look that massive there, but it's very dense um, text. It's it's. There's not many illustrations in it. There are kind of some nice line drawing maps you get there. That's the battle south of. And it isn't just D Day. It covers. Um, the whole Northwest European front. Now he's a journalist. So it's, he's got the same kind of back war correspondent, I suppose is more correct how you talk to him. Um, uh, but Chester Wilmot is, is in the same category as Cornelius Ryan. So Cornelius Ryan, who wrote the longest day, which you all know the longest day, there's no point in me mentioning that it's a classic. It's got mistakes in it as a book, but, and Chester Wilmot, you know, he's writing before the understanding of, of Enigma and ultra he's writing, um, in an era when some of the information about how the operation was planned was not known to the general public. 
Um, and it's a journalist's view of it. So he he puts his opinions in. He puts his uh, um, interpretation of, of command and, and, and leadership and so on. But it, I haven't read it for a few years, um, but it's one of those books that I look, I turn to every now and then and read a chapter of to remind me how the war was thought about 75 years ago by people who lived through it. Because he was trying, if he was writing today about Operation Overlord, he'd have more information to draw on. He'd have no veterans to speak to. So it's of its time. Um, it's not It's not a bad book. It's not a good book. It's an interesting book. It is a good book, actually. It's a good book. Um, but it's, you know, it's been outmaneuvered by modern studies that have access to better material or, or more complete material. But The Struggle of Europe by Chester Wilmot is definitely worth reading. Um, and as Neil said there, the early books give a perspective from people who who had a different viewpoint. It was recent history as opposed to 80 year in the past history. So it's 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 a different kind of understanding of, of the events. So Chester Wilmot, The Struggle for Europe is my next book. Um, similar in vain to 10 Days to D-Day, for those who like oral histories, um, the classic in that field is nothing less than victory, the oral history of D-Day by Russell Miller. Again, this is probably 25, 30 years old, and it does what it says on the tin. So each chapter that covers, you know, Sword Beach, Juno Beach, Omaha Beach, Paratroops, is basically, it's just quotations from people who are there. So I'm on page uh, 57 here, and it talks about Private uh, Sam Jacks, age 19, in the uh, field artillery. And then the previous page is a guy who was a truck company. And then, you know, it is just, there's no overarching narrative. It is just the words of the, it, it doesn't come out very well on the camera here. Uh, it's, it, I won't bother holding that anymore. It's just the words of those who were there. Um, now, you as the reader can interpret some of these accounts and say, well, he had a particular or she had a interesting view of that. But that's the point, that it is it is the narrow views of those who were there who don't understand necessarily or the complexity of grand strategy and the aims. It's just what it was like in a landing craft, what it was like to be receiving information in a, in a, in a radio station in so-and-so, what it would be like to be, you know, below decks on a merchant Navy vessel, whatever it would be. Um, the accounts in, in Nothing Less Than Victory are still repeated in other people's books there, and they were taken in the various different ways, the Imperial War Museum archives, other uh, universities and projects around the world collect. They aren't from one source. The oral history is used by Russell Miller. Um, but it is, it's a classic. I mean, if you want to hear about the events of June 6, 1944, by those who were there, warts and all, with their unashamed biases and viewpoints, that's the book for you. It's it's an absolute classic. It doesn't just include the privates; it includes the the the, the views of of some senior commanders as well, because it it's that kind of book. So, nothing less than victory: the oral history of D-Day by Russell Miller. Um, a more updated oral history book, and it's not quite an oral history book, and it has a narrative, is Giles Milton's book on D-Day. Now, I the soldier's story. Now. Giles is a multi-era historian. Uh, I know Giles quite well. We've worked on a documentary together. Um, we've met at, up at a, uh, We Have Ways Festival. So he tackles the Silk Wars. He's tackling um, you know, post-war Berlin, the Cold War. So he's not a World War II specialist. So the D-Day purists would find some little niggling details of, of machine gun types being incorrect or things like that. There's little kind of detail authenticity accuracy things in charles's book that that would be noticed by some people its strength is charles is bilingual he speaks french his family um reside in france half the time so lots and lots of french uh accounts um so when you're talking about the bombardment inland of omaha beach whereas some books will have it entirely from the u.s allied kind of operational point of view he has accounts giles from french civilians who are living off omaha beach that he got from the archives here in, in normandy and from from other french archives then translated to english of course so if you want a complete perspective of operation overlord and, and d-day with french voices this 
uh, the Soldier Story. Colin says it has a different title in the US. It's basically look for Giles Milton's uh, D-Day book and um, you'll find it there. So I recommend it with reservations for the people who know their technical stuff is they may, you know, notice odd errors about, you know, say machine gun types and truck designations and calibers of guns. But it's not that kind of book. It's about the people who were there. So, um, again, you follow individual commandos, individual RAF crews. And I say it's, it's particular strength is it gives a voice that has largely been ignored of the French perspective, because let's not forget that thousands of French died in the months preceding D-Day and after D-Day in the bombardments, in the battles there. And they are often the voice that is not heard. Uh, the, the, those who were here during the time of the fighting. So there we are. Giles Milton, D-Day, The Soldier's Story. Um, just a couple to go now. Um, it would be um, bad of me to not mention James Holland's book on the Battle of Normandy. It's the only one beyond uh, Chester Wilmot's that does go beyond D-Day. So James Holland, Normandy 44, D-Day and the Battle for France. Now, again, Colin and I have sat in the pub in fact, with James Holland, and there are there are mistakes in it. There's a mistake about um, the uh, where the, the site and location of the British Mulberry Harbour in the book. The maps a, a couple of details in. There's a couple of things in there that some of you will disagree with. That's that's history. Like you disagree with um, um, some of the views of my stories. What what James Holland is at heart is a brilliant writer, and if you want a gripping account that takes you through the Battle of Normandy campaign by campaign, beach by beach, you know, to the Falaise Gap, to the fighting for saint Lo, the fighting for Corn. James Holland's book is, is got to be up there in the top two or three books about the Battle of Normandy of all time. Um, all of his books read well. The one on Malta, the one on Burma, the, the, the new book about Italy. He, he has a certain style, a panache. Um, but, you know, is it the best book on the Battle of Normandy? Is there a best book on the Battle of Normandy? I don't know, but it's got to be up there. James is a good friend. I, I, I love him. I love James to bits. He's very um, supporting of new historians. He does incredible work. He's an incredible, hardworking historian. He's a really nice guy, and and it's 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 in my in my group of favorite books. Um, again, with reservations, there are some things in it that I would disagree with. Okay, that's that's going to be the case. So. Leaving maybe the best to last, although best is a um, subjective word, I'm often asked, okay, Paul, you've got to pick one book, one book only about D-Day. You've got to pick one that is readable, accurate, got maps, um, breaks it down, not too long, not too short, got enough detail. It's really hard to pick one single book, but I've done it. So the top of my list of D-Day books. Oh, and David Duffy is watching. Hi, David. It's my friend in Ireland. How are you doing, David? It was about a year ago we were in Arkan and Jeremy together. Um, is this book, D-Day by Robert J. Kershaw, Piercing the Atlantic Wall. So Robert has been on the channel talking about the German experience at Dunkirk. Um, I would love to get Robert back at some point. He's written about um, Arnhem. He's written about numerous campaigns. But this book, so it's kind of a nearly coffee table size you know it's bigger than the james Hahn book it's not massive it's uh what is it 210 pages or something heavily illustrated um lots of maps uh so it talks about there there's the page talking about 21st panzer attack uh, 21st panzer division's counter attack towards uh sword and juno beaches on d-day so what i like about Robert Kershaw's books are he's just a proper search the archive research in the in the in the documentation and put it in there it's not there's no conjecture there's not so there's not really opinions in it it's just a laid out beach by beach um and it's a good overview if you have literally never read anything about the battle of D, a battle for D-Day in France at all nothing I I, I can't Imagine where you've been if you've never read anything about D-Day. But this is a really good starting point. It's also a good kind of refresher. 
if you've written a lot about the battle, read a lot about the Battle of Normandy, and you're coming to Normandy next year for the 80th, why would you come here with all the crowds here? But you know what I mean. It's a good refresher. It kind of just grounds you back in that reality of here's who landed there, here's what they tried to achieve, here's the units that were stopping them, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It talks about the Atlantic Wall as well. So it's not it's not detail heavy. Interesting that the cover photo there is the same photo I use as my green screen behind me there. Um so um we just got a question there about the books about the french books well this is an english language speaking channel i may or may not at some point do some reviews of some french language books and heimdall and other books and Marianne edition do some good books and and unfortunately not enough of them are translated into english uh, at some point though i will do a talk about books about particular units particular division this is an overview book this is about books that cover the whole of operation overlord maybe focusing on the air or focusing on the navy or focusing on the beaches but they're about the whole lot i will break down do another show in the future or shows about individual beaches individual you know i'll do my best american airborne books or my best best british airborne books etc in the future so there we are that is basically my guide to uh um dna books um to finish off though you probably notice there's a couple of authors i haven't mentioned at all um namely stephen ambrose uh anthony beaver um i've not mentioned at all um because i don't rate stephen ambrose's books at all these days again like james holland although i'm not comparing them although i am in this sense a good writer stephen ambrose was a good writer he made you want to turn the page to find out what's happening next with since his death and in fact even when he was alive people have accused him of plagiarism and um, repetition and uh, plagiarizing himself in fact in that he copied chunks of his earlier books that put in his later books and he was very you know negative about the british and canadians he was very you know simplistic in some of his interpretation of things so i i do not recommend um stephen ambrose's books um i'm guessing we're referencing max hastings there now i nearly brought overlord max hastings books into to my to my book recommendations and it is a book that i would never discard from my collection um it has merit his book overlord i just don't think it, it it's been outclassed out maneuvered out performed by more recent studies it was back in its day in the 80s when it came out kind of a benchmark study i think these days it's it's not it's been overtaken um it doesn't mean there's not nothing in it of of, of the, that's worth taking away from it but yeah no max hastings book didn't make my cut for recommendations um and stephen ambrose definitely didn't and and, and i and frankly with anthony beaver's book on deed i just didn't enjoy it um it wasn't overly accurate or inaccurate i just it, it just doesn't it doesn't enter my uh my my category of, of favorites um it's it it's i told you at the beginning of the show it would be um biased uh because i have um yeah so there we are so that's so no 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 ambrose but that's it i will leave it there uh i've just done just under half an hour um i will do more of these we we get towards 2024 um there book reviews d-day battle of normandy if you have your own favorites please put the comments in the below if you think i'm wrong on things please again put the comments in below if there's books that you 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 I've referenced that you didn't enjoy, explain why you didn't enjoy them or why you did enjoy them, or 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 books that I have not covered that you think I should cover, please please keep the conversations going. I say I have a huge amount of books on the part of of Normandy, and sometimes I admit that my prejudices are kind of evolving. I'll I'll read a book and be reminded of it and think, oh, that's quite good, then I'll forget about it again. Um, the possibly two really important books coming out next year that i will discuss with the authors will be stephen fisher's forthcoming book on sword beach which i think will be an absolute game changer and a definite game changer will be niels's book on the germans in normandy um niels in the sidebar right now we will have niels back on to talk about he i got a message from niels via email this week it's on its way volume one is on its way it seems to have been an eternity uh, waiting for it. It's been various issues with publication. It's going to be absolutely packed with maps and charts and graphs. And and um, it, it will absolutely change our understanding of the Germans um, awaiting the Allied invasion. But we'll watch that space. And when volume one of Niels Henkerman's fantastic 
as I know it will be, book about Normandy comes out. He will be here to talk about it. So there we are. Um, cheers, everybody. I will see you again later. Um, it's Paul Wood for World War II TV. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. <laughs>